Politics is life. Something that my one of my old college professors said, they challenged our class to think, how can politics, how is politics not impacted in our lives? And it was really difficult for our class to come up with sort of some random topics. Is sleep connected to politics? Yes. What about the time in which you go to bed? Daylight savings time, ring a bell? What about the mattress that you sleep on? There's some sort of regulation to that. The roads that we drive on, the, the schools that we attend, everything in some form or fashion, either directly or indirectly, is tied to politics. You can't escape, okay? And so today's topic is really going to be about how young people and youth can really influence public policy decision making and get involved in the political process. Now, I was always a political junkie. I may have been a weird child, okay? My favorite TV stations were not only Food Network, but MSNBC. So that just explains my personality right there. Um, and so uh, clearly I was not gonna become the next Rachel Ray. So next best thing. Um, and so when I was a student at Thornton Academy not too long ago, we're celebrating 10 years of graduating this year. 10th, oh my goodness, I just cannot believe it. 10 years ago we graduated. So um, when I was a student here at Thornton Academy, um, um, I was able to host a public affairs TV show. We have TA TV Channel 3 on campus. And so it was really fun and interesting because I was able to sort of ask very tough questions um, of political leaders. And if you wanted to get elected in soccer, you needed to come on the show. So we had state representatives, state senators. We had the governor on, uh, congressional candidates. It was really interesting uh, because I wanted to be sort of meet the press, but soccer version. Um, and so it was really an interesting experience um, because a lot of politicians that came on the program were really put off. It's like, who is this young per oh, this is going to be easy. Whoo, I did not need to prepare for this. Um, and then I was like, well, buckle up, honey. You know, uh, we're, we're going <laughs> to we're just going to start delving into the topics that the mainstream media wasn't uh, willing to ask. And I think it was really important because a lot of the politicians, both Democrat, Republican, independent alike, had said, wow, these are these are really tough questions here. And I always love sort of putting them off um, because young people can make that difference. But I'll, I'll recall sort of one particular interview that really stood out for me that I think illustrated a major problem that I think we still have today. So I was interviewing a state representative candidate who will be unnamed, um, and it was, a, it was a fine interview. We were talking about a, a whole host of different issues, um, but when the real story was like after the lights died down and the cameras stopped rolling, that's when it got juicy, okay? So we were really not seeing eye to eye on a particular topic, some political issue, which was okay. We agree to disagree. Um, but in sort of the heat of the debate, randomly, she asked me a question that was really profound. She asked me, how old are you? And you know, we weren't talking about birthdays, right? We were talking about some substantial pieces of legislation. Uh, so it was sort of an awkward question. You know, it was like, how old are you? I'm like, okay. Well, I, I said 17, because I was 17 at the time. And what came next was really interesting. She said, well, you can't vote yet, so your opinion does not matter. Mic drop, okay? It's like, oh, snap, she did not just say that, okay? Um, so <laughs> it was really interesting. I wasn't upset, though, with her. Um, I was really upset with this mentality that was really rampant and I think continues to be rampant uh, in our politics, where because you can't give something, a vote, for instance, you're irrelevant to the conversation, right? Or your voice is meaningless because you can't go to the ballot box. And I was really frustrated by that because I couldn't vote yet, but I felt... I was really passionate about a lot of important issues and I was hoping that our soon to be elected officials or even current elected officials would at least take the time to hear me out as a young person. And I think that sort of theme sort of extends beyond just that one interview with that particular politician that I think a lot of young people feel and continue to feel sort of isolated from mainstream politics because maybe they can't vote yet, um, but they're equally, if not more passionate about the decisions that are being made today because the decisions that are being made today 
are directly going to be impacting the next generation. So why not get involved? Um, but I found throughout my life these barriers for citizen and youth engagement continued to pop up every place that I went. So while initially I wanted to, to be a reporter um, and be on TV and, and sort of ask those tough questions, with each barrier that I had to overcome about sort of making my voice hurt, I got more and more frustrated <laughs> with the system. And so this sort of path led me to the State Board of Education. Uh, the governor at the time, John Baldacci, appointed me uh, as a Thornton Academy student as the first student on the State Board of Education. Now keep in mind, they put two students on the Board of Education, but we couldn't vote. So once again, another barrier, because what I found consistently through that, that endeavor, that adventure, that yes, yay, we put two students on there. Um, but to me, it was almost like a photo op because our voices were stifled. Uh, and even on that experience, even though I was excited going, oh, no, we're going to tackle some really important issues, tackling civics education, making sure young people understand how their government works, talking about drug prevention, a lot of the issues that uh, we all cared about. But it turned out that even my first meeting, <laughs> I got in trouble already. Um, so I thought, yeah, let's use this opportunity to talk about these important issues. And I got a phone call a couple days later from that first meeting and said, Justin, if you want to remain on the board, you got to get in line, OK? <laughs> you you got you to calm down a little bit. Um, you, you can't bring up uh, these issues. We have a structure, and you have to abide by this template, that, that box that we're going to put you in. The other student member uh, usually sat during meetings and doodled, so this was really not relevant to her. But um, it was relevant to me because I really cared about this opportunity. And so it was just another illustration. Keep in mind, I was a high school student, and we had a chair of the State Board of Education calling a high school student and basically warning them <laughs> that you needed to get in line. And so it was really eye-opening. I got, again, more frustrated. It's sort of a reoccurring theme here that I was just not understanding why why would we not be welcoming to student voices? I mean, especially when you're putting two students on the State Board of Education. So I took away from that experience that we needed to keep pushing, we needed to keep fighting, and even though I could not vote, I needed to use my voice. The voice was the only thing I had uh, because we, as student members, could not vote. So I think it was illustrative of sort of the reoccurring problem that people under the age of 18 face, that you couldn't vote, but you have to use your voice, otherwise you're irrelevant and not part of the conversation or have a seat um, at the table. So I took away from that experience, okay, now I really want to be a journalist because I'm just frustrated with the system and I want to hold the system accountable. So I went to college for broadcast journalism. But then as I was going through that experience, I was coming to the realization, maybe quickly and slowly at the same time, it was sort of like the matrix, woo, right? Uh, where I was realizing that my vo I was gonna get in trouble if, if I sort of went down a path where as a journalist, you're not supposed to be the story, you're supposed to report on the story. And you're not supposed to get involved. You're supposed to sort of report the facts and leave it the way it is. You're not supposed to actually get involved from that. And, and I sort of started to contemplate that, am I gonna be able to do that? Am I gonna be able to sort of hold back from my passion for people, my passion for helping others, and my passion for actually getting involved in the process and amplifying other people's voices. And so one day I had an aha Oprah moment, and that aha Oprah moment was like, well, why don't I run for office? And so I was a college student. I was 20 years old when I had my aha moment. And keep in mind, I was probably a year and a half away from graduating college with a broadcasting degree. I was all set to become a reporter. I had done everything I needed to do to have a successful career in that. Um, so, but life happens sometimes, right? You just get a, a bug, you get a passion for something, and you try to go for it. So I came to that realization, I had the ha-ha moment, I was like, I'm gonna do it. So I signed up to run for office, and I didn't ask anyone's permission first. I didn't check with the political party, I didn't even check with the incumbent, who was a, a friend of mine, I didn't, I didn't check with anybody, I just said, this is something I believe in, I may not win, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to make a difference, I'm gonna try to amplify young people's voices and try to make a difference. So turns out, 
You're not supposed to do that. Okay, so um, I was 20 years old. I was going to college in Vermont, um, but coming back on the weekends to sort of campaign. But right after my campaign announcement, it was really interesting. I got called into the principal's office and basically told from one of the political leaders that I was supposed to check with that person first before, um, you know, starting down a path of running for office, which I'm sorry, I didn't see that in the manual. Okay, but that's okay. Um, but I was pulled in, I had to spend an hour basically defending why I needed to be on this platform, why I deserve to run for office, even though I was like, well, anybody can run for office. No one should be stopped from, from seeking that uh, position. Um, but that was sort of the mentality. The status quo interests were nervous that some rogue person was running for office and that didn't fit inside the box. That didn't fit inside the template to have a 20-year-old college student running for office. Um, we didn't have a lot of young people serving in the state legislature and we still don't really. Um, and so it was just fascinating because that was another barrier uh, where again I was a college student being told wait your turn this is not your time this is not your moment let other folks that are more experienced run and I said well the problem that we have in the system is that we don't have enough diversity of voices at the table we don't have enough young people uh, running for office so that's nice, but I'm going to still run anyway. Um, and it was really fascinating because the political party, a lot of the folks in my own party didn't want me to run. Um, and so they tried to find candidates to run against me, even in a primary. Um, and so again, another barrier along the way. Now running for office as a young person is very interesting, especially when you have spiky hair, Woohoo! right? So um, part of my journey was knocking on people's doors Hello, how are you? I'm Justin. I'm like, what? you are? Are you an intern? Are you? Uh, are you? Who are you? Um, and so it was really fascinating. There were some people that were very responsive, and then there were others that were like, "Honey, you're way too young. This is not going to go well for you." Okay, um, and that was okay. Um, you sort of take it all in. Um, but I found that nine times out of ten, a lot of people were really receptive to the idea that, "Wow." I'm surprised you want to do this. Why do you really want to run for office? Because it's sort of the, the norm is folks that are more seasoned run, that may have more life experiences, um, and there's positives to that and there's negatives to that. Um, but I found that nine times out of 10 people were very receptive. But getting over that hurdle, I think, is very difficult for, for young people to do because it, it can be a little scary, right? You're sort of having to put yourself out of yourself a little bit. And I found that as a college student, I sort of had to flip off my student brain uh, when I was running for office and then flip it back to a student mode um, and I really tried my hardest to separate my run for office and my college life because I was going to college in Vermont and then coming back every weekend to campaign um, and it was just a really unique experience where I was trying to have as much of a normal college experience as possible without them knowing that I was running for office in another state it was just very fascinating um, but I, I was very it was very empowering to see that so many people wanted a different perspective wanted um, positive youthful energy at the table advocating for the entire community because youth issues are everyone's issues right we all want to be able to attend college we all want to have good paying jobs you know all those things are sort of universal now we had our set of, set of challenges. There were a lot of people that said, no, wait your turn. You can't do it yet. But we proved them all wrong when we won overwhelmingly at the ballot box, both in the primary and the general election. But that wasn't the end of the barrier, okay? Because serving in office also created a lot of challenges, okay? So when you are serving as at 21 in the legislature, again, you get mistaken for interns. That's usually what happens. Um, and sort of like, are you in kindergarten? You know, the jokes that just, it's fun. And uh, it's sort of like when you have freshmen at high school, right? It's there's sort of like, there's a little bit of teasing that goes on. Same thing in the legislature when you're young, it's sort of a weird thing. Um, and I found that I had to work sort of 10 times harder than my colleagues to earn respect. And so that is sort of a, both a, an opportunity to learn and a lesson for other people. So when you're in environments where, you know, you might be the youngest person in the room, that's okay. But just recognize that you have to earn respect, right? You have to earn that. Uh, and by doing, by doing your homework and making sure you know what you're talking about, when you do speak, and hopefully it's in a very targeted way, you're speaking with authority. 
regardless of what age you are. And that's what I found is very beneficial in the legislature is that I put my head down and worked really hard and found issues that I was very passionate about, the community was very passionate about, and that frankly, no one else was really talking about. So issues like getting money out of politics has been my sort of life's mission and reducing lobbyist influence in the po public policy decision making. That's not a popular topic in the legislature. Um, and so again, another barrier that I witnessed while serving in office was I got called to the principal's office, this time the Speaker of the House's office, and said, you know, Justin, this was after a big speech on campaign finance reform and strengthening ethics and accountability in government. You know, Justin, this is not going to work out. If you don't get in line here and stop railing on this, you're probably not going to have a successful career in Augusta. What? Wait, I didn't realize all my constituents were at the State House here. I'm pretty sure you don't vote for me, right? Um, and so it was one of those situations where, once again, somebody in a higher position of authority was trying to dictate to me my voice, using my voice and my platform for the greater good, saying, you know, mm, this is not going to work. And so what I find is when you're in situations where you're with individuals that are a little bit more seasoned, there's two thing, two sort of approaches that they can take. One is embracing young people, embracing young people's voices to have a seat at the table, recognizing that maybe you are a little bit, they see a little bit of themselves in you. The other approach would be they feel really defensive that a young person that was maybe similar like them is coming forward wanting to, to do good, wanting to benefit some, someone, but they feel sort of that's an affront to their position of power. So there's two approaches, a positive approach or a negative approach when dealing with young people from, from more seasoned individuals that are in positions of power. So just recognize that. You know, when you're in situations where you're trying to make a difference, where you're maybe running for office, or, or maybe you're just trying to advocate for an issue you're passionate about, there's going to be either one of those two approaches, and hopefully it's a positive approach. There's a lot of people that do want to embrace the youth voice and, and encourage you to participate and empower you to reach your greatest potential and get involved in the process. But then there's also others, like I've witnessed throughout my life, where they try to put up barriers to your success or barriers to your engagement. Um, uh, and so to how you deal with that is really critical. You know, you can't stop your feed and be like, oh my gosh, this is so bad, you guys. Let me Snapchat that, okay? No, it's, it's about recognizing that, no, your place in a greater society is so critically important, right? It's so important that your voices are heard and have a seat at the table. And now more than ever, it's important that you make your voices heard. Because when you turn that magic number of 18, you don't suddenly know, it's not like there's a manual for life. It's not like you suddenly know what's the difference between a Democrat or Republican. It's not that you suddenly know, well, this is my path of great citizen engagement or just, just involvement in the community in general. There's lots of ways of getting involved. And obviously I would encourage everyone to think about running for office. We don't have enough young people, but we also don't have enough uh, young women and women in general serving in politics. So I would encourage everyone to think about that. Just about anybody can run for local school board and just about anybody can run for town council. Um, so that's just something to think about. And that, and usually those ages are pretty, pretty low. Usually about 18, you can immediately run for office. So, the, so some of the barriers are, are really not there from an age perspective. It's really about recognizing that inner spark that you have. And each and every one of us has that. Each and every one of us has a light to shine very bright, but you have to have the courage to, to take it and actually run with it, to use your voice for the greater good. And I usually use this analogy. You are the driver in the car of life on the highway of self-discovery, meaning no one can take responsibility for your life besides you. Only you. It can't be your parents, can't be guidance counselors, can't be your friends. You. This is your path. How are you choosing to use it? How are you choosing to use your voice to benefit your friends, your family, your neighbors? What are you doing as part of an interconnected society? And you can make that difference now regardless of your age, regardless of your background, no matter who you are. Your voice matters. So please, if you have one takeaway from today about finding your flow, it's about finding your voice, finding the courage to use that voice for the greater good. It's about letting your light shine so bright that if somebody says that's a little too bright, you tell them they need sunglasses. Thank you, everybody.